Hey all, so I've had a request to give a very quick tab comparison between the ISTJ and INTP. I'm actually really, really glad I received this request because this is actually something I see pretty often. And I've even had cases where maybe someone considered themselves to be an INTP originally and I ended up typing them as ISTJ. But I have to disclaim it's not going to be as cut and dry as saying you are absolutely this type and therefore not that type. Furthermore, as per CPT network theory, which you can find more about over here, some types are simply more proximate to some types than other ones. ISTJ happens to be a proximate type to INTP. Typically, it's difficult to employ introverted thinking, introverted sensing without employing introverted sensing, introverted feeling alongside it. Why is that? Well, notice if you really hold to a strong definition of something or the opinion you have formed through the careful kind of deductive process of an ITP, you're going to have a fair degree of introverted feeling resolve. You're going to have even maybe a level of righteousness in holding to that truth. Typically, ISTJ INTP is actually a fair intersection within the type spectrum. But for this video, I'm just going to kind of break down what the main functions of these types are, and then hopefully you can kind of pass them apart yourself. So with INTP, you're looking at TISI, introverted thinking, introverted sensing. With introverted thinking in dominant position, this is much more of a rational emphasis. The type is trying to storehouse knowledge. They're really seeking a sense of consistent resolution rather than leaving things intentionally open-ended and ambiguous. Pairing introverted sensing to introverted thinking entails a very specific and precise form of introverted thinking. And indeed, this is actually a type who often lists precision as one of the top values in typing sessions, I've found. And on a higher level, having introverted sensing paired to introverted thinking anywhere, even if it's like a, you know, ISFP or ISFJ, ESFP, any kind of sensing thinking pairing is going to entail a more precise and specific form of logic. So now we can briefly segue to ISTJ because the ISTJ actually has intuition paired to thinking. This is a much more general and broad sense of logic. ISTJ is much more often than INTPs use a kind of general overview or impression of something. They'll use more generalizations in their logic. They may even have a more mystical side, more forming logical impressions of something than necessarily deep um, constructed analyses. Both types do dip into each other. When an ISTJ has a specific interest or when they really care about something, you will notice that TISI coming out. This is when they get their detailed kind of stereotype. But across circumstances, you're going to find more of an intuitive thinking approach. You're going to find a much more kind of spiritual side to an ISTJ than is often common in the INTP, a side that looks for general patterns and principles. And I don't want to go too deep into CPT for this video because it's supposed to be more of a high level overview, but I will briefly talk about the INFJ intersection of both of these types. Again, these types have each other in their respective auxiliary networks. The ISTJ is a little bit more proximate to INFJ, hence why they're more of a general holistic and general thinker. They have introverted intuition paired to introverted thinking within their dip functions. And again, looking at auxiliary processes, you'll notice they come out more when a person really cares about something. An INTP will dip into ISTJ when they really care about a specific, I don't know, subject of analysis or a specific social cause, even. So the ISTJ doesn't normally have to care that much about something to activate a level of kind of INFJ-ishness, a level of NITI. But they would have to care about something quite a lot to go into INTP. Similar with INTP, they're not necessarily going straight into INFJ all the time. But you notice when an INTP really does start caring about something, they become a lot more SIFI solid in their convictions, maybe even a bit more moralistic, and they become a lot more kind of broad and general in their long-term strategy for the kind of meta-conclusion they want to arrive at. But that's deep CPT and we don't need to get stuck into those orders too much in this video. But if you're noticing commonalities between types, it's not just because you're getting cognitive functions wrong or you're mistaking one thing for another. Types really do seem to dip into one another based upon their relative degrees of proximity in the network. And so far we have the sensing, thinking, analytical dominant pairing of the INTP consigned to a more rational agenda that seeks to resolve things more than it does leave things open. We also have compared the more intuitive thinking style of the ISTJ, which is a little bit more generalistic and doesn't need to get too stuck into the nitty gritty of analysis. But again, once they care about something, they will do it, just as how the INTP wants to care about something, they will zoom out a little bit more and start using these logical principles 
these definitions they've formed as building blocks towards a larger aggregate. In regards to the feeling pairing, this is actually the inverse for these types. The ISTJ is introverted sensing, introverted feeling paired together. So introverted feeling here is actually an agency position, which is auxiliary to introverted sensing. This actually entails a kind of holding constant of introverted feeling value. So therefore the person much more than an INFP, for example, which is the reverse in position, you're going to have someone who's really holding to their values over time. They're gonna have a deep sense of knowing who they are. They're gonna have strong boundaries typically and ease for kind of standing up for themselves and the people they care about. They're generally gonna be more like a rock in a river. Chaos may ensue around them, but, but they will be holding themselves constant. And by holding to themselves and their own beliefs, they know they can overcome any obstacle. An introverted feeling here is operating alongside the extroverted thinking authority. So this tends to be a type who draws a lot of pride upon their own achievements. They look at all the things they've been able to survive and overcome, and this actually allows them to build a constant sense of self and identity, often based more upon extroverted thinking metrics than would be an introverted feeling dominant. And as it's SI in dominant position here rather than FI, this is a lens dominant type. Therefore, the ISTJ is much more comfortable than the INTP, who is a codec dominant type, a rational type, to just leave things a little bit open and ambiguous. As long as their intuitive feeling isn't feeling threatened, as long as they don't feel there's a sense of urgency to get something done, they're a type who's more comfortable not knowing about something than an INTP would be, for example. So now we can touch upon the nature of sensing when it's paired to feeling across any type, you know, ENFPs, ENFJs, ISTJs here. You're going to have someone who has a more concretized sense of self. They might struggle with a kind of larger aggregate structure like, you know, identity, um, a feeling state, a mood or a vibe such as intuitive feeling. But you're going to have someone on the other hand, who's going to be a lot more comfortable with emotional nuance. They're going to be more precisely aware of their individual emotions coming out. They're going to be more emotionally analytical, if you were, and a heck of a lot more comfortable with feelings like ambivalence, allowing conflicting feelings to exist alongside each other. The INTP, by contrast, is more of an intuitive feeler. They have extroverted intuition paired to extroverted feeling, which also means introverted intuition paired to introverted feeling. So this is a type who's going to be a lot more oriented towards a kind of emotional impression, a vibe or a mood. They're going to struggle a little bit more with precise emotional analysis, and it's, unless they're really dipping into that ISTJ network. And again, if they care about something, they can do it. But as a general trend, they're much more intuitive in their feeling operation. INTPs might switch between different feeling states. Now I'm angry, now I'm sad, this is chill, this is relaxed, this is cool, this person's cool, this person's not cool, this person's smart, this person's not smart. It's like more of a kind of general impression of people, much more than kind of precise FI analysis, such as in the case of ISTJs. So it's really cool to be able to compare like the sensing feeling to intuitive feeling, the sensing thinking to intuitive thinking. But we can also compare the orientations of function. One thing these two types do hold in common is going to be that SI any axis with a more introverted proclivity. So you're going to have introverted sensing being more active, more convergent, more reflective, whereas extroverted intuition is going to be more divergent, more passive, more reflexive. That kind of reflexive extroverted intuition is kind of just observing the external world more passively, but also from a more kind of negative attitude. It's more pessimistic. It's looking for things that can go wrong. Both of these types can have a bit more of a survival mindset. They tend to be good risk assessors. They don't like taking too many risks in the atmosphere around them. And they're generally going to be good at predicting what's going to happen next. As the ISTJ has extroverted intuition penned more to extroverted thinking, these are still a little bit more mechanistically predictive people. They can say, oh, this is going to happen because that thing's happening and that thing's happening over there and they're going to collide with each other. They are very naturally adept at surveying the external world around them to see whether or not everything is in order. As the INTP has extroverted feeling paired to extroverted intuition, the kind of mechanistic side is going to be a little bit more unconscious. You'll find the INTP a little bit more clumsy. They might walk into things. They might just not notice when things are there. ISTJs, when they're very introverted, can still be like that, but again, just general trends. Spatial awareness is going to be a little bit higher in the ISTJ because they're looking at the mechanistic landscape in a very broad level overview. And since the INTP's extroverted intuition is paired to extroverted feeling, they're going to be a little bit more risk averse when it concerns to social factors. You know, admittedly, when they're around people they like or when there's no social consequence, such as on the internet, they can actually be a lot more socially abrasive. But when they're out, and about in less comfortable social surroundings, you're gonna find they're just gonna lock up a little bit more. They're gonna be more fearful. They're gonna be complying with etiquette. They're gonna be 
observing the kind of social harmony and ensuring they, or maybe even people they know, don't do anything to kind of thwart the general harmonious direction the world is currently taking. They really want to preserve the kind of social vibe. They like there to be a nice, pleasant social atmosphere because it allows them to think more clearly without having their nervous system get activated. ISTJs are typically more comfortable in positions of kind of nervous dysregulation outside themselves. They can tune it out a little bit easier with introverted feeling. They might find, for example, they're more comfortable in a position of conflict with a loved one, for example, because having the nervous system get kind of activated isn't going to have that kind of avoidant impact as it would in the INTP. INTPs, because of that aversive extroverted feeling, are going to be a little bit more flight over fight. If there's disharmony, they just want to kind of get out of there. They do feel a little bit uncomfortable a lot of the time with feelings of emotional vulnerability, and they'd rather not commit their emotional energies unless they absolutely have to. ISTJs are going to be a lot more comfortable with feelings of vulnerability, and they're generally more happy to talk and wear their emotions on their sleeves than INTPs are. But I would say extroverted feelers like INTPs can wear their emotions on their sleeves inadvertently, but introverted feelers like the ISTJ can sometimes find their emotions felt very strongly within, but they may have a difficult time expressing them to other people in the first place. So there's definitely a kind of two sides of the coin thing going on here. And finally, the introverted sense in convergence usually entails a kind of deeper sense of internal reflection. It's someone who generally wants to get things right. They're going to take longer to kind of stew on something and analyze it from multiple different angles in order to feel like they have arrived at a sense of consistency and continuity after kind of stitching different data points together. SI convergence typically has a more sequential kind of logical style. For example, it's going to generally receive a lot of information from extroverted intuition, have a level of discomfort from applying too many NI generalizations, and instead try to, let's say, consume a lot of external information in order to precisely analyze and compartmentalize different categories one step at a time. So eventually they can kind of arrive at a jigsaw puzzle and finally put all the pieces together. So that was a quick high-level overview of ISTJ versus INTP. According to network theory, this is just a natural consequence of cognitive function pairing proximity to each other and the kind of coexistence of like a dominant network with an auxiliary network. So ISTJ for some people will be more auxiliary to INTP and vice versa. But because of the, you know, aversive extroverted intuition, the more insensitive introverted sensing, the thinking compulsivity, that's another thing I didn't really touch on in the video where these two types really find thinking as an entire process, TE or TI, just a lot more compulsive than feeling. And just the kind of higher level traits that emerge from the combination of thinking compulsivity with a kind of SINE axis within any introverted type, you are going to find mistypes occurring. It's totally normal for an ISTJ to really see the INTP side and look more at that because they don't really identify with silly stuff like a being a sensor or intuitive, for example, or a judger versus perceiver. It is less common for an INTP to mistype as ISTJ, but that can happen, especially the a lot more interested in their own introverted feeling processes. So that concludes the video. I hope this has been useful and I'll be back real soon. For now, take care.